All right, so I am finding assets for fire that I can use. And I, I'm using um, Pixabay just because it's Creative Commons open and it's easy. And I'm using vector files from Pixabay, though I'm going to download them as kind of medium quality raster files. But because I'm animating them with an emoji, I thought that would match. But there's no reason I couldn't use like photography of fire as well. GIFs are goofy. You can do whatever you want with them. So these are some of the different ones. So when I download, I'm actually not going to download the vector graphic. I'm going to download kind of the medium sized image because my image is only going to be 800 pixels by 800 pixels. And I'm doing a few of them. They're all going to go to my downloads. And then these are the assets I can play with in my animation. So when I go back to Photopea, I now have my ending asset. I already have what I need for my last frame and for my first frame. But I need all this stuff in between. So downloads. Let's bring this fire in. There we go. So it's already big enough. And of course, it's a smart object. I can distort it. I can shift it. Warp it. Even as a smart object to really suit my purposes. And this is a good shape for kind of the end as it's sizzling down to a briquette. So I'm going to move that up and out from the bandit folder. Keep it as a smart object for now. This is my big flames. So when it really goes up, I have this, and then maybe I duplicate that. And I flip it. Control T, not Command T. So I flip the duplicate horizontally. And that's a little too um, symmetrical and copy pasty. Makes it look like a, a new fascist logo or something. So instead, I can also warp it and make it my own kind of asymmetrical big flames by pushing and pulling it in different directions. And by adding it with other, other layer groups, right? So those are my big flames. We've got lots of flame assets. And you can see how just by adding them, it looks like the flame is spreading. Fire is nicely additive. And then let's bring my last one in, which looks a little different but could be a fun one to start with. And then let's see, do I need smoldering? I don't know what that's going to give me. Yeah, that could be helpful. Oh, and then it gives me an adult content one. Ooh, watch out. Smoldering on Pixabay. So we're going to bring in this cigar, it's still downloading, not sure why. Hmm. There it is. And I'll bring that right into Photopea. And I'm going to close some of these extra tabs, they're not going to help. Now, I can modify my assets. So far, I've kept everything as a smart object, but if you want to modify, you're going to have to rasterize, right? Right-click and rasterize. And that way, I can delete the cigar part of it and just keep the kind of glowing ember and the smoke. And I can modify things as much as I need, and I can do it in kind of a rough way. So 
for the first time with this project, we can create our own pixels instead of just modifying from existing. So let me pr plug in my tablet here. So I thought that's what was making a making YouTube work strangely, but YouTube's just being odd with this setup. So I'm going to set set it to my brush tool. And I'm going to set my brush tool just like I did when I made my sketch. I'm going to go ahead and set it to 100%. And I'm just going to hold down, let's see. Oh, I thought that would work. Yes, option to steal colors. And then I can actually paint with those colors. And there are some students that really enjoy just being able to draw on this project. And finally, you can use pressure sensitivity. Create exactly the pixels they want instead of being forced to find everything from other sources. And the next assignment is when we're designing our own logos. So I definitely encourage you to start getting used to these tablets and to making your own images. Now because it's also only at 800 by 800 pixels, it's a pretty low resolution. You can also just use your magic wand, especially if we're doing kind of these vector kind of shapes. And I can just say edit fill with whatever color. In this case, it's going to be black. And then I can just use my magic wand to cut away from these existing pixels as well. And get rid of all that cigar brown. And I am not at all limited in the kinds of source material I can use. So there is one smolder. If I duplicate that, and then Control T and flip it. And then maybe warp it. There's some transparency built into it already. You can see them kind of overlapping. Turn off auto select here. I can build that smoldering smoke, you know, in, in a variety of ways. Okay, so those are some assets I have now. So let's start animating. Since I've built a lot of assets now, I need to organize them. So in the first two panels, I want to show this character panting. So what do I need for panting? And honestly, just to simplify my life, I'm going to go ahead and merge all of these vector layers. So to do that, it got confused when I uh, used the merge function on the group. So instead, I'm just going to turn off everything, hold down and select everything, right? All my vector shapes hold down option and say layer merge layers. And that way I have all the vector shapes should I need them. But honestly, I'll probably just delete them. I will <laughs> because they take up a lot of memory. And instead, I just have a clean two resolution image of Bandit for my first frame. I'm going to turn on the blank background. And this is my first frame. I'm going to turn on my guides and set them around each corner. I'm going to make sure that it is 8 by 8 inches at 100 pixels per inch, which is 800 by 800 pixels, which I can see from my rulers already. I can also check under image, image size. So all that's good. And now I've got a lot of assets built. I can always add more, but I'm going to save this now with a new name. 
So I want to export or save for my computer, save more, go to save PSD slash PSB. It's only seven megabytes. I'm saving it. It's going to downloads. That gives me the opportunity to rename it. Coming in, being slow today, but I can see it. That's why I like using Chrome. I can see when it's downloading. There they are. There they are. All right. So now I'm going to move that file to my folder, my assignment three folder, and I got to give it a new name. So, because I don't want it to overwrite my older exercise. So this is going to be assignment three assets. We're actually going to set up two different files. And I'm going to mark it as green. And all these other supporting files I'm going to strip of their color coding from past projects. This is the one that matters. So now I'm going to close Photo P as we do. Close these other browser windows that I don't need. And I'm going using this inspiration, this kind of choppy Terry Gilliam animation. So I don't need it to be perfectly smooth. And I'm going to open up Photo P again so that I can now bring in my assets PSD. Remember to save your asset and work from here. So this is my first frame. Now this is the, the step for animating, for setting it up, then taking a picture of it and moving it into your final film. And it's a little annoying, but this is how it is in Photoshop and in Photopea. So what we're going to do is we're going to select it all. So once you're at your top most visible layer, so in my case it's the bandit layer here, I have to click on that layer and I'm going to hold down Option. I'm going to select everything underneath it. Hold down Option, Layer, Merge Layers. It's important that I hold down Option so I have the merged layer here. Then I'm going to select all from that layer. And the shortcut for that is Command A. Then I'm going to copy all, which you can do under Edit and Copy, but the shortcut is Command C. So I'm going to say this a lot, Command A, Command C. And now I'm going to open up a new photo P within the same window. So it's a new project. And I want that new project to be 800 by 800 pixels by 100 pixels. If you want it in inches, it's 8 by 8 inches by 100 pixels. Needs to be uniform. Then I do Edit Command V, which is to paste it in. Which should have worked. <laughs> but I can go back. I can select it all from my merged layer. There it is. Command C, copy. And then Command V, paste. There we go. So it all comes in. That is one finished frame. And see that it has the white background behind it. The reason we want a background, even if it's just a white background, is so it locks into these proportions and covers up anything that might be behind it. If it was just free floating, then I'd have to turn off all the other layers underneath it. So this is one strip of film. Now this file we save as something else. We save this. with a new name, which is our stage file. So we build all of our assets in one photo P file with all its different layers. We use that to kind of set up our scene for our different keyframes. And then once we're happy with that frame, we merge it all together, we copy it, we move it over into the stage. Then we go back to the assets, we delete that merged layer, and we build the next frame. And that way we have all our components so we're not destroying things as we go.